might know me as that girl from that show if you watched any reality television on MTV over the last 15 years. I was on MTV back when Clinton was in office and MTV still played music. And um, my character was the naive, virginal Christian. And after my first show, Road Rules Australia, I went back and did six more reality shows on MTV. Don't you judge me. I know what you're thinking. I didn't want that to be my legacy, though, or the only thing that people knew me for. So I went back to school, and tomorrow I graduate with my PhD in religious studies from the University of Pittsburgh. <laughs> <laughs> the good news, though, is that this talk isn't about reality TV or religion, so that's great. Um, but what I do, just stick with me, is I study evangelicals, and specifically I look at the prosperity gospel, which is a tradition within Christianity that believes that faithfulness to God will bring you health and wealth in this lifetime. And for my dissertation, I analyzed the themes found within this message by looking at the sermons and Twitter feeds of some of the prosperity gospel leaders like Joel Osteen. So even though this is an evangelical tradition, a lot of the language that they use is very inspirational and very self-help based. So they'll talk about ideas about living a victorious life and being hopeful and how to live your best life. And while I don't practice this tradition, I find the message intriguing. And I gotta say that listening to positive sermons and reading inspirational tweets isn't a bad way to make a living. And after hours and hours of coding all this content, I started to wonder, am I living my best life? And what does that even look like? In addition to being a PhD student, I was also a new mom. And uh, like many new parents, I was tired and homebound and not exactly thriving. And I was hearing messages telling me to lean in but all I really wanted to do was to get a good night's sleep. So I started to think about the idea of what would, be, what would my best life look like? Everybody's best life would be different, but I think that mine would include a creative outlet. So psychologists are often talking about the benefits of creativity on the physical and psychological well-being of children, but as adults, we kind of get bogged down in the real world, so to speak, and we forget about the benefits of creative play in our own lives. And I wanted to tap into this sort of creative catharsis, and I also knew that I had to limit myself to the existing professional and personal parameters of my life. So with that in mind, I looked at my own resources, things I already had, and I decided to create the Meisterpiece podcast. If you're not familiar, a podcast is really just a radio show for online. And in my case, I interview celebrities and newsmakers. And you might think that, you know, we're often complaining about how busy our lives are and how much chaos there is, so it seems silly to then add another component to the chaos. But I found that adding a creative component didn't actually complicate my life, but it helped me professionally to be more productive, and it gave me greater overall happiness. So um, I came across three themes along the way that helped me be successful, and the first one is to be bold. So boldness, if we're going to dare to create, that's our theme, boldness is sort of a prerequisite. I often get asked how I get some of the larger name people to come on my show, and the answer is simply that I ask. I get lots of no's, but I also get a few yeses, and I like to strike out swinging, so I might ask 200 people and get 10 people to agree to do it. You'd be surprised how many times I have called Ron Jeremy's house, the legendary porn star, in order to get an interview, and this takes a very particular type of boldness to call a porn star's house over and over again, but it will be worth it when I get that interview, and I will get that interview. Creativity kind of requires that type of action and boldness, and I feel like there's a reason why 
the Nike slogan has been just do it for the past 25 years. Sometimes success is as simple as making the decision to do something. I've seen brilliant scholars have wonderful ideas, but then they fail to complete their scholarship and their research because they didn't take action on the idea. Taking action is simple, but it's not often easy. There's kind of an inherent risk in being creative, but I feel like to get unstuck, you kind of got to start moving. So the next thing I came across in the themes was to be inspired. This was a common refrain among the prosperity gospel leaders that I was analyzing. And I started to wonder, what does that even mean? How can we force ourselves to be inspired? Inspiration is something that's supposed to just happen to us. But scientists tell us that action precedes attitude. So if we behave a certain way long enough, eventually we actually start to feel it. So we can, by definition then, choose inspiration. And so one of the ways that I found this inspiration was by embracing social media. I often hear people lamenting about the ways that technology is a distraction. You know, we're so busy tweeting and taking pictures of our food that we aren't present in the moment. And I totally agree that sometimes technology can be distracting, but it could also be a tool that we use to recognize those moments every day and the people in our lives that might otherwise go unnoticed. The last thing that I found that helped me was to keep going. And you might notice by now that these principles aren't revolutionary. They're pretty simple and basic and kind of self-help 101. Perseverance is not a new idea, but the application of it can be really difficult. So sometimes I talk about the process of getting my PhD, and in many ways I feel like it's just not quitting at this one really hard thing. And I suspect that each of you has something in your life that you didn't quit. For some of you it might be a marriage, or a job, or a marathon. We all have reasons to quit, but when we don't, something really extraordinary can happen. As academics, we're told that when we present our research, we're supposed to answer the question, so what? So, so what? So what if there's another blog or podcast in the ether? I don't think that I'm the first person to feel stuck and stifled by my circumstances, but now I know that I can look around and use my existing resources and talent to create something new. And then when I do that, it benefits me in all the other areas of my life, personally and professionally and so on. So there's a commonality of feeling stuck in our circumstances. And I want you, when you leave today, to go home and just look around at the things that you already have, your resources and your own talent, and try to create something new. And I don't know whether it's Joel Osteen or Ron Jeremy that inspires you, but I just ask you to choose inspiration and to dare to create. Thank you. Thank you.